Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Sarah Luckert. And I'm Bethany Biggenhill. Here's your news now. Let's check in with Rocco Del Monte as he talks with Susan Fitzgerald about the foods that will help you get your semester started off on the right foot. Hello, this is Rocco Del Monte for Location, and today we're going to talk to Susan Fitzgerald about foods that increase brain function. So students might want to know if there are any foods that help get them going in the morning on their way to class. Um, certainly eating breakfast is very important uh, for uh, mental health and for being able to function well academically. And we also know that caffeine, although it's a stimulant and not really a nutrient, can help you focus um, on your academic work. Snacking is very important. It's hard for students in particular to make sure that they get three balanced meals a day. So it's often easier to have smaller snacks. So focusing on fruits, on vegetables, on whole grains is important throughout the day. And really there are no bad foods. Um, you should be able to eat whatever you want. It's just the amount in which you eat them. So we know that certain fats might not be as good for you as other kinds of fats, but limiting the amount of those bad foods or bad fats, um, including sugars, including alcohol, um, would be better for your health. College football iconic Joe Paterno has passed away at age 85. Head coach of Penn State University football team, he was a, her a hero among faculty and students in spite of the football program's recent sex scandal. Paterno was diagnosed with the lung cancer in November, which ultimately took his life. Members of the community are stricken with grief as Paterno died a legend, holding the record for most wins in college football nationwide. A 15-year-old girl escaped a near abduction after getting off her school bus near Chester Park around 1 in the afternoon. A man followed and chased the young girl down the street. She got away after striking him in the face with an unidentified object. Police have released a sketch of this man who is still wanted. The disabled community in Philadelphia is getting long-requested wheelchair accessible cabs. Philadelphia is currently the only city out of the country's 10 largest cities without the much wanted and needed cabs. The parking authorities promises all cabs to be finished by 2016. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go across the nation with Bethany. A scene out of The Wizard of Oz has left the southeast shaken up. Severe storms and tornadoes tore across major areas of Alabama and Arkansas, leaving behind over 100 injured and several deaths. Nearly 400 homes were destroyed or damaged. The unusual storm season has left families devastated. Emergency crews continue their search for victims. The once leading product sold to the American public, Kodak, has finally hit bankruptcy. Competing against major companies such as Apple and Sony, the cameras no longer stand a chance in modern technology, as well as easy and accessible camera phones have completely changed the use of photography. The bankruptcy seems to mark the end of an era for photography altogether. Nearly two months after the beating of Florida A&M University's marching band drum major, Robert Champion, the students responsible have been dismissed from school. The brutal hazing on a bus ride home from a game led to the champion's death. The four members of the band in charge of the incident have been expelled from school and arrested. The school has increased its efforts to crack down on the cruel tradition of hazing. No charges have been brought as authorities are still investigating. Now let's go to Sarah for your trip around the world. There was no better place in the Caribbean to welcome Laura Decker home from her two year sailing voyage around the world. The now 16 year old took off from Gibraltar when she was just 14 years old, making her the youngest person to sail around the world. The controversial trip was almost canceled due to Dutch authorities' concerns for the young girl's safety. Fortunately, Decker is now home and safe. Bodies are not the only things still being found from the wreck of the cruise ship Costa Concordia, which crashed off the Tuscan coast earlier this month. According to BBC News, two more bodies were found confirming the death toll to 15. Over half a million gallons of fuel is scheduled to be salvaged from the ship. There have been no reports of leaks so far. President Barack Obama has approved European Union sanctions to ban all new oil contracts from Iran, as well as freezing assets of Iran's central bank. Iran's foreign ministry spokesmen say that the sanctions are unfair and doomed to fail. 
According to BBC reports, Iran has shown no sign of peaceful nature against the serious threat posed by Iran's nuclear program. However, Tehran insists its nuclear program is for energy purposes. Let's go to Jimmy for this week's Tech Connection. On Thursday, January 19th, Apple announced that they would step into the field of digital textbooks with the introduction of a new iBooks application. By partnering with the three companies currently responsible for 90% of the textbook sales in the United States, Apple will focus on high school textbooks, at first priced at $14.99 or less. The authors can continually update their content, and students get to keep their copies indefinitely. In addition, Apple unveiled iBooks Author, an ebook authoring application for the Mac. This will enable anyone to create an interactive book for their store. iBooks 2 is available as a free update to their current application. The part, second part of Apple, Apple's presentation dealt with an expansion of Apple's current iTunes U program, which is a free educational podcast section in the iTunes Store. The new iTunes U advances content from basic audio and video lectures to a full-fledged learning application. This will give non-traditional students access to huge amounts of free content, but more importantly for Apple, the new iTunes U will allow schools to adopt iTunes U as a serious learning platform. iTunes U is available as a free download in the iTunes App Store. That's all I have for now. I'll stay plugged in right here to bring you the latest tech news. Now I'm back to Sarah and Bethany. Now let's go to Mary Kate for the weekly sports update. The most talked about game of the week was the competition between two elite basketball teams, the unranked Notre Dame and the number one undefeated Syracuse. The Fighting Irish was previously ranked 11 and 8 and is now being recognized as a superior team as they knocked off the 20 and 0 Syracuse by nine points. As for Cabrini sports, on Monday, January 30th, the Cabrini College men and women's basketball teams will play a non-conference away game against Eastern University. Let's take a look to see what coaches, students, and players have to say about the game. Coming Eastern game is a huge rivalry game for both teams. It has been one of our most intense games of the year. We uh, have uh, filled both, both gyms regardless of where we play. It's always a battle regardless of the record of teams. Fortunately, we have come out on top. We're 3-0 against Eastern and uh, still hold the street sign for the Battle of Eagle Road. Hi, we're on the women's basketball team and we're very excited about the upcoming Eastern game because uh, we're huge rivals and we love the Battle of Eagle Road. It's really exciting when everybody comes out to the game and supports all of us, so it's a really good game for everybody to come out to. I'm excited to win. We're going to pull it together as a team. Eastern team, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, they're, uh, they're a lot of seniors, so they're kind of experienced. and. Uh, but their starting point guard, I heard uh, his arm's broken. So they don't have one of their starting point guards. And Cabrini's point guards are all good. They're like, got a lot of guards, so it will be tough to beat. Yeah. They're good, but Cabrini's a lot better than them. They'll probably win. Last year was the first year we played Eastern um, since they left the conference. Um, so it's, it's nice to kind of start that rivalry again. Most of the other sports have continued that tradition, so um, also making a tradition with the men's team helps kind of increase that rivalry between the two schools and the student body. So we're hoping this year to make a better statement to go into their court and challenge them. Um, Eastern women's team has done really well in the MAC this year, um, so it'll be a really good non-conference contest for us and a chance for us to get better. Last year, this was my, uh, was my first year at Cabrini, so was not familiar with the Battle of Eagle Road until I was told about it and to see all the students come out was a great you know, exciting game. I'm hoping that this year we're better prepared and more focused to go over there and get our win uh, so we can begin to claim blagging rights for the Eagle Road. Come out and support your Cavaliers at the Battle of Eagle Road and tune in next week for the results of the game. Now back to the news desk. Let's go to Holly for this week's entertainment news. Hey everyone, it's Holly here with your entertainment news. This week we're going to discuss the latest celebrity trend, divorce. Celebrities such as Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony, Katy Perry and Russell Brand, Kimmy K and Chris Humphreys, and the latest announcement is that Seal and Heidi Klum have decided to call it quits. Russell Brand filed for divorce from his wife, Katy Perry, after a year of marriage. Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher decided to separate after six years of marriage. In addition, we cannot forget the infinite, infamous 72-day marriage between Kim Kardashian and what's his name? According to E! News, Seal and Heidi Klum have decided to separate after seven years of marriage. 
Nowadays, being a married celebrity has no value because the amount of divorce and separation occurring has taken away the significance of saying I do. With the 84th Annual Academy Awards nominations recently coming out, I decided to take a look at my favorite movie of the year, The Help, which is nominated in three different categories, including Best Picture and four awards altogether. In addition to being nominated for Best Picture, Viola Davis, who plays one of the maids, Abilene, is nominated for Best Actress, and Octavia Spencer and Jessica Chastain are nominated for Best Supporting Actress. For a full list of the 2012 Oscar nominations, be sure to check out Location's Facebook page. With the Oscars coming up for all of the movies that came out in 2011, we decided to take to campus to find out what movies students are looking forward to seeing in 2012. Let's take a look. What movie are you most looking forward to seeing in 2012? I'm probably most looking forward to The Hunger Games for 2012. I read the three books, the trilogy, and seeing as I've read them, I'm most looking forward to the series coming out <laughs> in theaters. Contraband because it's, it has Mark Wahlberg starring in it and he's my favorite actor. I'm really looking forward to seeing Sherlock Holmes 2 because I have this weird obsession with Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2 because I read all the books and I loved them. The Vow because I like romantic movies. The novel's my favorite movie, Rachel McAdams is in it, so I just want to see it. I'm most looking forward to see uh, Dark Knight Rises, which comes out in the summer, I believe. And uh, I really enjoyed like the Batman series. I don't follow comic books, but the first two movies were unbelievable. And I'm assuming the third one's going to be just as good. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Sarah. And I'm Bethany. Have a great week, Cabrini.